Hello there, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Mildra, and I am your Gaming Monk for the evening. This is day 12, my birthday, of the RPG A Day 2019 challenge. Today's word is friendship. Also known as the best ship on EVE Online. As much of a cheese as this is going to be, I feel it's appropriate for me to talk about my ties with RVT on this particular instance. See, the whole thing started when Biohybrid contacted me asking me if I would be willing to GM for the group. The whole I was given two options. A PDF of Writer the Transformation and a thread of a Sentai character class on Giant in the Playground. I ended up going with Ryder because I felt that was the more complete package, and the idea of doing Super Sentai in the D20 system did not sit with me, and it still does not sit with me. However, as time went on, and I began to do more and more stuff with them, and the whole and the twenty episode series of Rider the Transformation came and went, which I consider a mixed experience for me. I opted to ex to ex use this opportunity to expand everyone else's horizons when it came to RPGs, because I didn't want to. Do While they have a fair amount of focus on Togusatsu and anime and occasionally video games. I wanted to take that space that they had given me and run with it in my own way. Not in the form of use the platform to create change. No, I'm not I'm not some arrogant Black Widow writer. No. I wanted to use it to do to present my world in their way. That's a little bit grandiose of a way to put it, but that was my think that was my thinking at first. Because once that finished up, I was not really interested in utilizing Ryder again because of how much of a pain in the ass it was to try and get certain mechanics right. And to put that in perspective, something like Utility Forms, a mainstay of Common Rider since 2000. Actually, I'd argue even since 1987. I had to come up with On the Fly. It was not in the main book. Because of that... I ended up going with something different, and I wanted to do something that I was going to be a little more comfortable with and was something that was going to be a little more outside of the familiar. So I did Numenera. And we did that for a while as a kind of, not an overarching story, but a bunch of smaller tales. Sometimes using one-shot adventures, sometimes otherwise. With the last one being, of course, the lengthy adventure known as The Devil's Spine. This was to kind of give a contrast to, to me. And then, in the middle of that, that was when I came up with the idea of Monk Minis. A kind of one-session break from the usual thing, just to keep things fresh. And once, New once Numenera finished at a level that I was comfortable with, I decided it would be then appropriate to move into a, to, another, to another setup. I believe that one was the set was the second city. Nope, I take no, I take that back. It was not the second city. It w it was the enemy within, using the much maligned and much controversial Warhammer Fantasy Roleplay Third Edition, which I will admit it has its problems, but I do think it got a little bit m too much hate than it deserved. And I'll probably cover it again when I talk about a little theory I've had with Fantasy Flight Games' forays into um, RPGs over the last decade. But more on point, the enemy within the 3rd edition version of it was a very fascinating mental of a whodunit. And I do take pride in the fact that Every, that everybody ended up falling for the red herring when it came to who was the actual black cowl in that mystery. Which means that I ended up setting up all three as, as potential enough that, and this was the key thing that I, that I had t said to them, any of these three people could be the villain. Every one of them has means, motive, and opportunity. It is merely a question of who actually had the balls to go through with it. 
And of course, I had the I had it in mind about who was who it was going to be from day one. But I wanted to see how long it would take before they figured it out, and it it went for a while. And then there was the second city, which covered Legend of the Five Rings Fourth Edition, a game that I have a pers- I've had a bit of love for for God knows how long. I'd say all I'd say going all the way back to. For, um, first edition and suffering through the edition we don't talk about. That said, the setting after that, um, Doomsday Dawn using the Pathfinder Second Edition playtest, was probably the most cursed run I've ever done. We had some staff change issues. We had we had to do some shuffling due to some due to some people not being able to fit it in their schedule. There were plenty of times where one person couldn't show up, so we had to do so we had to do a one or two week postponement. And by the end of it, I decided, you know what, I need to give myself a little bit of a vacation. And that's why when um, when this event when the things with RVT eventually come back, I'll be covering it on my own neck of the woods, just to kind of help bring things a bit full circle. But I'll always be grateful for the fact that they took a chance on me instead of trying to get somebody who had more of a 5e background. Now granted, I did have a small advantage in the fact that I was a frequent poster on the forums with the old site, but I was still a relative unknown, and even the posting style that I had back then doesn't reflect the style that I was doing with my um, videos eventually, especially after I did that soft reboot a few years back. But it is something that I hope to continue in the future because there's a lot of games that I want to, that I want to try with them. Some of them because of my own curiosity, and others because I want to fuck with them, i.e., paranoia. But it'll be interesting to see how this goes out. And hey, I managed to get two really awesome convention appearances out of it, so I'd say everything worked out. 